Welcome to City on a Hill Kids Church Online. I'm Moa. And I'm Jimmy. Today we're going to be looking at what happened in between the Old and the New Testament. But that will be after time of worship. We are continuing in the series of the Bible overview. We finished looking at the books of the Old Testament and now we are going to look at the books in the New. Before doing that, I want to talk a bit about some of the things that happened that prepared the world to receive our Lord and our Saviour Jesus Christ. The Bible, after all, is one story, even though it is divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's just one story all about Jesus Christ. If you remember, we ended the Old Testament knowing that the Persians were the superpower. They were the ones that were in charge of the whole world at the time. And then when we get into the New Testament, we see that it's the Romans that are the new superpower. They are the ones that are in charge of the whole world. But between the Persians and the Romans, there were the Greeks. The Greeks were such a superpower that everybody in the then known world spoke Greek. Even the Hebrew Bible was translated and written into Greek. Remember prophet Daniel? He had said that there were going to be a bunch of superpowers. He started off with Babylon, then Persia, then he did say the Greeks, and then the Romans. 
So between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament, there were 400 years. How can I even describe what 400 years is? Uh, let's use the kings and queens of the United Kingdom. About 400 years ago, the person who was the monarch of the United Kingdom was Queen Anne. She was the one seated on the throne. Do you know Queen Anne? <laughs> Probably not. Anyway, now we've got King Charles III who is seated on the throne. And just before him was Queen Elizabeth II. And in between Queen Anne and Charles III, there were all in all 13 kings and queens. I'll show you a picture of some of them. Four hundred years is a, a while and during that time is when the Greek Empire rose and fell. I'm going to change gears a bit right now and um, talk about the priests. So, in the days that the Jews were in Jerusalem and Judea, the temple was a very important building because that is where worship and sacrifices to God were made. And the priests were the ones who sacrificed, who made the sacrifices for the people to God. Well, it was King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon who changed all that because when he conquered Judea and Jerusalem, he broke down the temple. He destroyed the temple and then he carried the people off to Babylon. He carried nobles, leaders and priests off to Babylon. So all the sacrifices weren't done anymore. While in Babylon, something started to happen. You had the Jews come together in groups. In these groups, it was like a meeting place where they kept their culture, their heritage, their religion, everything about God alive. These gathering and meeting places came to be known as synagogues. Even when the exiles returned to Judea and Jerusalem, they continued this practice of meeting in synagogues. The role of the priests somehow changed too and grew. Remember we said that the priests used to make sacrifices for the people to God. Well, while in exile, they also were the people who would speak on behalf of the people to their conquerors, to the Babylonians and to the Persians. And this continued even into the time that the Romans were in charge. So we had the priests practically becoming politicians. Another thing that the priests did was that they learnt and taught the commandments and the laws of God. Do you remember in the Old Testament who we mentioned did this? Yes. Ezra, he was one of the people who learnt the word of God and went back to Judea and taught the people. Experts in the law were called scribes or lawyers. And those scribes that were really, really good at teaching were called rabbis. And Jesus was a rabbi because he was one that taught the law. So I've just said a bit about what happened between the Old and the New Testament. Everything that happened prepared us, prepared the world for receiving our Lord and our Saviour Jesus Christ. And that's the end of the story. Hello everybody, how are you? Happy half term if you're on holiday. 
So, last week we did really well, didn't we? We got to the end of the Old Testament in our Books of the Bible song, and we'll practice that in a moment. But let's just keep on. We'll add, we'll just add four books. This is nice and easy, the Gospels, and you probably already know them. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And last week was quite a difficult week of learning books, so we'll just put those four on. And let's go from the beginning. Here we go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus and Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth and Samuel, Samuel, Kings, Kings, Chronicles, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Jehu, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Hooray! Well done. So, thinking about what Ivy's been talking about today, about how God, he never stops, even when we're not hearing him, we're maybe not seeing what's happening, God is still there loving us. He's working away. And so it made me think about this, the infinity symbol. Have you ever seen the infinity symbol before? It's like a figure of eight. It just carries on and on and on forever. And if you needed to write infinity, for example, in maths, that's the symbol you would use, like a figure of eight on its side. So I've experimented with making one of these out of paper. And you can see I've written on it, God never stops. And this is a good reminder for the times when I'm like, oh God, are you still there? Are you really caring for me? Are you really loving me? I can't hear what you're saying. He's still there. He never stops. So let's make one of these. First of all, you need to cut yourself a strip of paper. And if you're using A4, then you want the strip to be about two centimetres wide and the whole length of the A4, like so. Now, another thing that's really useful, I've discovered, is one of these, a little paper clip. So I'll show you how we're going to fold this. So first, you make a loop like that and you get a lot of uh, badges, don't you, that are this size, they, this shape. They make a loop of two ribbons like that. And if you just put the paper clip on in the middle to hold it, that makes it easier. Because then what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom two sort of uh, tails. Oh dear. That's come off. Let's just make it again. So we fold it into a loop. We put on our paper clip. We take the bottom two uh, tails and we'll bend them around to make another loop. And that's it. There we have it. So you could just make one like that, plain white, and glue it, but you might want to decorate it. So if you want to have some words on it, I've experimented a bit, and for the words to come out in the middle, you need to put them at the edge. So just write them at the left-hand edge. Don't make it too long. If you make it a very long message, it will carry on right round, which will be fun, but you won't be able to read it very easily. So as you can see, I've just said, God never stops. So then again, we would bend that into our loop like that. And we can put on our paper clip. Now, on my one, I haven't just got the words, have I? I've also got these flowers either side. Now, it's quite difficult to draw those on while it's like this, but also you need to measure where they come. So the best thing to do is write on your words, then clip it together like that, and then take a pencil, and we're just going to lightly draw on I'm just going to do a circle either side in pencil so when I unclip it I can see where my other decorations should come. Now the other thing is which way up will they need to go? Hmm, that's a question. Just so I can be sure I'm going to make both of these into a little smiley face and then I know when I take it apart, I'll know which is going to be the top and which is the bottom. And the surprising thing is, God never stops is that way up, 
I don't know if you can see it, my smiling face is the other way up. So whatever I draw, if I want it to come out the right way up in the end, it needs to be in this position and the other way up. And what I'm going to actually draw is a heart. I want a heart on either side of my phrase, God never stops, because I'm going to be thinking about, for this one, God never stops loving. So I've just drawn those over the top of where my smiley faces were. Now I'll rub out the pencil. And I'll just colour them in this nice bright pink for one of them. You can obviously take a little more time. And then I'm going to use this paler pink for the other one. Good. And now, because I measured it all out beforehand, when I fold this up, I know it's going to come out correctly. So, first of all, there we are. I'll fold that across there, like I did before. And this time, when I bend round the bottom, I'm going to glue it. So let's just see, that's going to fold like that. So I just need some glue on the back of here. And fold that round like that. And then actually, I also want a bit of glue in the middle. You wouldn't have to put a bit of glue in the middle, but it does tend to lose its shape. Otherwise, it kind of unfolds into a funny sort of circle with a bend in it. So there we are. God never stops. He never stops loving. He never stops working. He never stops caring for us, whatever is happening. So. I hope you enjoy experimenting with some infinity symbols and you can think of all the things that God will never stop doing. And I'll see you again next week. Bye. I've said this before. God always tells someone or some people that something is going to happen on earth before it happens. That's right, Jamie. You've said it before and it's true. Here today, we have seen that God made everything ready for Jesus Christ to be physically here on earth. What do you mean by that? Explain a bit more. Well, everyone spoke Greek. Even the Hebrews, the Jewish, spoke Greek. And the Bible was translated into Greek so that everybody that could read could read the Bible. Jamie, what you've just said shows that you were listening and thinking the Greek Empire was the leading world empire. That's when Alexander the Great conquered the then known world. Oh, okay. About the synagogues though. What about them? They all looked like a community gathering that God's word was read and taught. Yes, that's right. There were also general community meeting places. They were around in Jesus' times, and they're also around today. Yes, and Jesus used to teach in them. He did, and so did other Christians. Today, we have meeting places just like that. We have church buildings where we can meet and praise God and worship together. Wow, these things are so interesting. That's right. But that's it for this week. Till next time. Bye. Bye.